Hello and welcome back to my online course on special relativity. My name is Andrzej Dragan. I'm a professor of theoretical physics at the University of Warsaw and National University of Singapore. I like what John Wheeler once said about calculations. Never start the calculation before you know the answer. So in today's episode, we will learn plenty about relativity without using a single equation. All we will do is just consider some thought experiments and look at some interesting apparent paradoxes of relativity. So until now, we have discussed what happens to space along the direction of motion. And as a consequence, we discovered Lorentz contraction and other effects. But what happens to the additional pair of dimensions, y and z? What happens to them? So let's consider the following thought experiment. Imagine a hollow pipe, and then another one, just like it, and then suppose that those pipes are moving relative to each other along the common axis of symmetry. If such a motion affects the perpendicular dimension, for example by contracting it, then in the frame of one of the pipes, the other one will appear slimmer. And if the relative velocity is high enough, one of the pipes can go through another. But it is clear that the question of which pipe will go inside of which depends on the reference frame. And therefore, if you choose the other frame of reference, the role of the pipes will switch. So if you replace one of the pipes with a full cylinder, then in one of the frames, it will safely pass through the other pipe. And in the other, a collision will take place, leading to a paradox. This simple example illustrates that the idea of a perpendicular contraction is simply inconsistent with the principle of relativity. Mm? And for that reason, we need to assume that the Lorentz transformation of the perpendicular coordinates is a trivial one. Y prime has to be equal to Y, and Z prime equal to Z. Well, let's check out another interesting paradox of relativity. So the city of Warsaw has this interesting attraction, an underground tunnel that runs alongside the river instead of underneath it. But that is just the beginning of the paradox. Imagine a car and a tunnel, roughly of the same length. And suppose that according to the policeman that is standing next to the tunnel, the car is moving very fast, so it undergoes a Lorentz contraction. It's simply getting shorter. So in the policeman's frame of reference, when the car goes through the tunnel, it can easily fit inside, because it's now shorter than the tunnel. But let us ask a question, what happens in the frame of reference of the car? In that frame of reference, the car is standing still, and the tunnel is moving in the opposite direction. So in this frame of reference, it's the tunnel that gets contracted, and half of the car sticks outside of it. Is this not a paradox? Because after all, who is right? The driver or the policeman? So this problem is caused by the notion of simultaneity that secretly sneaked in here. So when the policeman says that the car is inside a tunnel, what he really means is that the front of the car and the rear of the car are placed inside the tunnel simultaneously. And we know very well that the notion of simultaneity is relative. So according to the driver, when the policeman makes his measurements, those measurements of the front and the rear are not simultaneous at all. In fact, according to the driver, the policeman makes the measurement of the front of the car first, and after the car moves a little bit inside the tunnel, the policeman carries out the second measurement. And clearly, this procedure doesn't make any sense from the perspective of the driver. On the other hand, if the driver wanted to make his measurements to be correct and simultaneous in his frame of reference, then according to the policeman, those measurements wouldn't make much sense. So this example should teach us that uh, when solving these kinds of paradoxes, we have to be very careful. And in particular, we have to be very cautious about the sneaky notion of simultaneity. So let's have a look at yet another apparent paradox of special relativity. Consider a stick, a horizontal stick of some length, and a horizontal barrier with a hole that is slightly shorter. And suppose that the stick is moving with some relativistic velocity so that it undergoes a Lorentz contraction. And at the same time, the barrier is moving vertically up, and that motion doesn't do anything interesting to the barrier because the Lorentz contraction only takes place along the direction of motion. 
So suppose that you have chosen all the velocities in position in such a way that the contracted stick can fit inside the hole so that there will be no collision and the stick will just go through the hole. It gets more interesting if you ask the question how does this story look from the perspective of the stick. In this frame of reference, the stick has its normal rest length, but the hole is getting an extra horizontal component of velocity and therefore it will contract along the horizontal direction, making the hole shorter. So it seems that in this frame of reference, the long stick cannot fit in the short hole, which simply cannot be in agreement with the Galilean principle of relativity. So here we made an interesting mistake. It turns out that it is not allowed to break down the velocity into its components. So the reason why it's not allowed to break down your velocity into components and then apply the Lorentz transformation in two steps is a simple one. Lorentz transformation is a hyperbolic rotation. And as all rotations, it does not follow the composition law. So if you take any object and rotate it by 90 degrees over the vertical axis, and then follow that with another rotation over the horizontal axis, you will end up with a different state than if you perform those operations in the opposite order. So if you first rotate it over the horizontal axis, and then over the vertical one. So that means that you cannot just break down your hyperbolic rotation into steps, because the order of those steps would matter, and it's not even clear which is the right order. So whenever you need to apply a Lorentz transformation along some arbitrary direction, you have to always make sure that you apply it directly along the direction of that motion. So the lower figure is simply incorrect. What we have to do is to consider the resting barrier and then contract the barrier along the direction of velocity. But if you contract the horizontal barrier along the tilted direction, then that operation will not only contract the barrier, but also rotate the whole thing. And now, when the hole is rotated, it is now possible to fit the long stick in a short moving hole. Problem solved. So in the next episode, I'm going to discuss another portion of interesting paradoxes of relativity, including the one according to which Elvis still lives. And I'm that serious about it. So, if you are an Elvis fan and you cannot wait for that, just get a copy of my textbook on relativity. It's called Unusually Special Relativity. The link is in the description. And in that book, I discuss all these topics in much greater detail. So, it's a great supplement to this online course. But today the party is over. If you like the video, you know the drill. And if you cannot wait for the next episode and you cannot get my book, just get some music in your life and you'll be fine. I'm never gonna have it and you ain't no friend of mine